Welcome back to the LCS Game 5. Team Liquid versus FlyQuest. The one versus the four seed. FlyQuest definitely the favorites coming in, but now it will all come down to this one game. First place doesn't matter anymore. Fourth place doesn't matter anymore. It's who does the next game. Nothing matters anymore, except, except how they're playing. <laughs> 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 Nothing matters. <laughs> Raz, how do you feel? Yeah. Feel really good if you're a Team Liquid fan, right? And also, I'm just glad that we have a game five. Yeah. Like, we have a competitive series. I was a little scared after yesterday. Yeah. I'll say that right now. Yeah, I was a little scared. I'd say that my confidence level in both of these teams is very up and down. Like, it's kind of mid because I feel like both teams have had really good plays and then both teams have had very visible mistakes. And I think the underdog element is very true. Like, mm. Team Liquid came into this series recognizing that, like, and even Spawn said it. Like, we're performing in scrims. It's not coming out on stage. Like, <laughs> we know we're better and we ha haven't been able to showcase it, and they're finally being able to do that. Their setups have been great. Like that last Drake fight where it's like they had no way, FlyQuest in this case, yeah. of going into the Drake uh, fight with how Team Liquid had set up. They're playing great League of Legends right now. Yeah, I think the big thing that I do want to highlight is their Drake control just overall. They've gotten 100% of the first Drakes in the series, and they're also at 72%, I believe, for the total of the series. So that's a place where we kind of expected, we talk about how TL are so macro focused in their prep and their approach to the game. Um, however, that is a kind of place where I expected FlyQuest to be able to find ins in some of TL setups, right? And when we've seen FlyQuest succeed in regular season, it has been around, they get an objective and then they just are able to suffocate you and close out the game. Yeah, and even before the regular season, Jet, like when you came into that season, which players were you excited for from Team Liquid? I mean, for Team Liquid, you're always interested in seeing how Core J will do. You're yes. always interested in seeing how Impact will do because they won championships with them. And then you wanted to see the growth of APA and Yawn. And I think what's interesting about this series is who is performing at, above, or below expectations. Mm. And I think with the inconsistencies that Team Liquid had this regular season, Yawn has really shown up this series. Yes. Yeah. Part of it is because I feel like Core JJ is also reaching back to some of his uh, historic performances when he was winning MVP. But Yawn has really popped off. He had that one game where he was 13, 3, and 13. I think he had like 1,400 DPM. They're consistently generating kills and advantages through the bot lane. And now that there's more pressure on them in the game five, now that they're one game from actually taking off FlyQuest, I think the pressure does change on the side of on the side of FlyQuest for me, we were just seeing some shots. Inspired looks really frustrated. <laughs> he's playing, I mean, he's an MVP candidate. I think he's gonna be top three MVP in most people's ballots. And he has not played like that this series. On the flip side of that, Jensen has been lights out. So uh, a, a lot of this game five is gonna be like, who can show up on the day? Jensen has done it in plenty of game fives. Inspired hasn't necessarily done the game fives and Yon hasn't won that many playoff series. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Fudge's early prediction and waiting room comes to, right? Even at the end of that the game, tilt. he was just like, I'm looking at Inspired, I'm watching his face. Uh, but I do want to highlight Jensen for having a really stellar performance, even in their losses. I felt like he's been really involved. They found great picks for him, like the Talia, like the Huey. Um, And it's been great to see him show up, even with, like, obviously, I think people's minds will go back to the singular mistake in mid lane, but I don't think that in any way erases how well he's been performing the rest of the series. Yeah, I feel like uh, teams should have been banning the Orion and Azir a little earlier in the season because now <laughs> that he's finally off those picks, like, he's been able to showcase what we've all expected from his lengthy career is that he can play a whole bunch of picks. And a lot of them, of course, control mages, but like that just is something where you get to see how he performs in team fights and how he, Talia I've loved. The Talia yeah. in particular, because he can unlock uh, the top side of the map more regularly with how volatile it's been. And also looking towards bot lane and bailing him out if there's ever a time where like tur turret's being knocked at. So yeah. big fan of how Jensen's been performing this uh, whole series. If we were to end it in game five, even if it was like a murky game five win off of FlyQuest behalf, I think Jensen's kind of like knocking himself in as a, as a player of the series candidate. Yeah, and we just see the players now coming back onto the stage, putting their headsets on. Whippo, first one back. Uh, ready to go. I think in particular, he's had a really interesting dynamic this series with the threat of his four or five picks. Yes. You're never picking him in the first part of the draft. He's always trying to pick something that's going to surprise you. And in game four, oh, right. that surprise fell completely flat. They early picked Volibear. Mm -hmm. They went all the way to the fifth pick to flex a top lane, go like Vibe, Volibear, Talia, Pike. 
that composition fell flat because it didn't get ahead early and then had absolutely no way of killing the front line of Team Liquid. So that is one instance where it didn't work out. And I wonder, I really do wonder what their conversation was going to be backstage, whether it's going back to basics of, guys, we were the first place team. Mm -hmm. Let's just do what we did. Or if they're going to continue to try and pull curveballs. Yeah, that's the tough part because the time in between games, not that much, right? You can't talk about the specific moments in the games that got you in the bad positions you could get that you got into, because I like the Volibear flex. I completely forgot that it was a flex that could go top lane. And so I still think that's a, stre a strength going into game five that Flippo can still use, that they can still go into four five, and that's something that I think they should continue to push for. But in the game, obviously, they're making mistakes that Team Liquid are ca capitalizing on. Okay, who wins game five and why? I'm going to you. Ooh. Oh, wow, why do I have to do this? <laughs> I'm chucking it to you. Uh, so for me, if you guys can, since I asked yeah. the question, I, I'm giving a slight edge to FlyQuest. They have side select. They pick blue side. They get mm -hmm. to run the draft. I feel like the first pick there from Team Liquid, getting the Ash and immediately bought control was good for Team Liquid. I think FlyQuest has something that'll give them a slight edge in game five. So I need to go FlyQuest because I have to stand by my original prediction. Uh, as people know, I don't actually flip on predictions ever, even if evidence would suggest otherwise. Raz, we, the champ select starting. We That's need to get it in. That's a team liquid for me. I think Ryan right. has been flipping. on his A game, and I have a team liquid victory. I'm flip flopping. Nice. All right, split decision here. Casters, take it away. Thank you so much, Jet. And my goodness, we are here, game five. I don't think anyone was expecting this result here coming into the beginning of the series. Yeah, no one was expecting that, but everyone was expecting Raz to flip-flop on his prediction because while Emily never flip-flops, <laughs> Raz has never in his career stuck to the same prediction throughout 100% flop rate! 100%. <laughs> He's consistent, I'll give him that. Uh, it's going to be a really interesting game. And the question about the draft, I think, is, is an interesting one because to me, the FlyQuest loss was almost nothing to do with the draft in last game. I think it was so much to do with execution. Failed level one, you die for free. Now you start with E, now your bot lane's kind of screwed. Then, before both of the important dragons, they were building these advantages, building these leads, getting tons of kills on their Talia. It's like, okay, sweet, time to fight a third dragon. Oops, got picked. All right, no problem. We're going to fight a fourth dragon. We'll stop soul. Oops, got picked. Yeah. And so it's like they never gave themselves a chance with their comp. So it's always weird when you lose a game like that and you go back and you discuss it. Are you saying it's the champion's fault? Are you saying it's the draft's fault? Are you saying it's the play's fault? Like, there's so many different things. Because, you know, we don't know if the draft would have worked, but it definitely didn't because of execution. I would say, yeah, it is play uh, at fault here. I would also say there's no way in hell they're picking Pike again this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'd say both are true. They're definitely not running back the Pike, and they definitely made some critical errors. And we we're kind of talking about it on the cast, but one of the big ones, investing cooldowns before the big timing for the right. for the fight that's right. going to come up or the objective that's going to come up, and then that biting them a little bit later. Yeah. Now, Bear, back to Volibear Ban. It's a self ban. I've done that. Playing flex queue with the boys. Someone <laughs> just runs it down. You're like, you know what, Rafa? No need to leave for you this game. <laughs> Whoa, why is it on me? <laughs> oh, Blue man. here for silver scrapes. Well, looks Respect. like we delivered. <laughs> Good call there. He's going to have to come back in the next couple days. We're going to want some more. <laughs> you got tickets for all playoffs, right? Yeah. There yeah, you're going to go. be here, right? Yeah, Saturday and Sunday. I'll be there no matter what. Team Liquid still thinking about this <laughs> last ban. There's a lot of things that they took off the table in previous games. It was that Renata Glask that was the final support Ooh. pick. I, I think that's a good ban. Yeah. Jensen's been smurfing on Talia. Where is where is your Varus priority right now? Because we have had a lot of like Nautilus first picks, um, but I feel like Var Varus has been so big. Yeah, Varus has been really strong. I do think Varus prio should be quite high. Uh, I think especially Yawn has been outstanding on it. On the FlyQuest side, maybe you care more about the Nautilus because you can just play Callisto or whatever with it, uh, where I do think, you know, Masu has looked quite good on that. But I do think we're likely to just see Varus Ash again yeah. for TL. I think that has worked really well for them. I think that Yawn has been looking stellar on the Varus, so uh, could just see the Varus grabbed up right now. Or even the Callista Ash as well. Yeah, that, that's definitely a possibility too. If you think that's the better denial pick, if you think that's the stronger 2v2. Uh, these are both really strong lanes, and I think it plays to the strengths of TL. They've been looking really good as a 2v2. Yawn has been on fire, but um, we'll have to see you know, oh. what FlyQuest can get done. Okay. Well, they're going to hold on to the Ash and guarantee 
this Ari for APA. Yeah, I think that, that that's really smart because they're not going to steal away Ash right now for FlyQuest, do Ash Nautilus into yeah. you, into your Kalista. And since you use your third ban on the Talia, now you get the Ari uh, priority here for APA and don't let Jensen have that. Jensen's Ari absolutely ran that's over them. Insane. Yeah, he was really good on that. He was really good on the Talia. Azir, he's been great on, but that's obviously been disabled, unfortunately, for playoffs. Orianna's banned out, so now Jensen has to bring out something different here and showcase what he can get done. Is the Varus kind of as expected over on the Fly Quest side? Yeah. The last time that we saw Jensen pulled down after three champion picks away, it was the Quay, but it looks like FlyQuest are just gonna lock in the Renekton and give Jensen a little bit more time to cook up something. Well, I think one of the nice things about picking Renekton here is that you kind of lose that, that red side's counter pick advantage uh, because you have to go for your Ash or whatever if you're gonna go down towards that bot lane. Then you can do some protection bans up towards top lane, deny some of the picks that could be coming through from impact that you're concerned about. Um, so, you know, I think the expectation is definitely that Ash would come through here on three, then FlyQuest start throwing bands towards top lane, and TL have to cook something up, but instead, they are going to make the pivot, so they're not going to go with double marks in lane, they can instead go towards, if the Ash gets banned out, something like a Renata, or something like a, even a hard engaged style champion, and they're instead prioritizing that Ignite Rumble that did crush Whippo in lane, but then kind of falters later on. Yeah, I think that's the main reason there, because it, then you would be relying only on your possible jungle pick, for, for the frontline setup there to be able to face check and do things if you wanted to Ash a little bit more squishy. Yeah. Core JJ also, I think he's happy either way. You know, like if Core JJ gets onto an engaged champ, he's always happy as well. Uh, we are running once again into uh, heavy Merc Treads uh, possibility already since it is another double AP comp yeah. uh, and quite possibly they're going to have even more CC after uh, the RA charm here locked in. So they themselves are going to ban out one of the pairings with the Renekton. Obviously, the Sejuani was the first ban here for Team Liquid. <laughs> I like that. You, you don't want to be on the receiving end again. What do Team Liquid round out this composition with? You already talked about that there is a desperate need for frontline. Sejuani is I mean, it's gone. AD jungler, so it's like Zin or, or Lee Sin, you know, based on what's up, probably. Um, it's probably going to be that, and then it's going to be either Core wants to play, you know, for 2v2 lane, or he wants to play something hard engaged, you know, for the composition. So, because it's double AP soul lane, has to be AD jungler. So, FlyQuest are going to be another AD jungler. Whether they're more worried about the Zin Zhao or Lee Sin, that kind of remains to be seen. But those or, are the two. Or the Viego. Out. I mean, the Viego yeah, game sure. we saw from Inspire was, yeah. was a little suspect. So, uh, with it, whichever one they choose, Umti's still going to have multiple options. Yeah. I always think of, of Umti and Mora as kind of that, that Zin Zhao Lee Sin guy. He obviously played a ton of Lee Sin in the LCK. Uh, and it's going to be the Zin Zhao band. So Viego is an option, Lee Sin is an option. I think it's one of those pretty much for sure, um, but obviously could, if you have a more conditional pick, uh, then you could save that jungle pick to five if you think that gives you value. Whoa. No way. No way. Triple, no way AP? triple AP? Come no on. Way. No way, no way. Also, Lilia right now got nerfed. Yeah. It's, it's not <laughs> in the best state, so there we go. We get that empty Lee Sin. His Lee Sin kick into the core JJ's uh, Rel ultimate, into APA Ziggs ultimate, was one of the best looking plays that we had this whole series. So I think everyone will be pretty happy to see him back on that again. And they themselves also banned out the Poppy uh, preemptively uh, from their side. So I like that. Uh, no Poppy possible answer here from Inspired. This would, be like the, this would be like the FBX, like the Milky Way. No way he's going like Car Kindred with if this. If he goes carry no alongside way. the Annie, that's kind of the Milky Way special from FBX. So yeah. would be really exciting to see if Inspired's going to no go way. towards it. Into a Lee Sin. Go, he can still go Viego or something if he wanted. That gets yeah. a lot of upfront burst with it. And but it's this, an AD pairing. But this is nice though, because Annie can always guarantee that point and click stun he's on such mobile characters. Here, uh, Kalista can hop around. Ari's spirit rushing around. You have the mobility from the Lee Diego, Sin. Yep. What better way to lock him down? Now you have the Death Charge and Annie's CC to lock down these mobile carries. Yeah, and Annie there, you know, when you do play Annie with these carry style junglers, it's so much about that 2v2, about enabling them. Annie is so much up oh, front first. It's going to be able to pair it with that oh, Diego. This is really good into melee matchups as a support, so it's actually very good for the 2v2. You win almost every fight when those melee supports go in because you're constantly resetting with your passive to get those stuns to get those heals out, and if it's well-timed, can answer the hard engage. No, uh, not only is this a quintessential counter engage support champion because the ultimate, like you're talking about, it is also, to me now, the core JJ yes. pick. This is this has become synonymous with core JJ. Very few other junglers are, or supports are even practicing mm -hmm. 
the uh, the Terra here and Core JJ constantly going back to it. You do have to time it really well, or else you end up looking super bad yeah. uh, <laughs> with it, though. If you You're with not it. wrong. And so you you need to have some good uh, you know kicks from Umpty or charms from APA to guarantee that you're getting value out of it. But when you're staring down a an Annie trying to flash on your team and not all this and all this hard engage that you're talking about, uh, it definitely is a very good tool. I love chat was all spamming Milky Way as soon as the Annie got locked uh -huh. in. The yeah. legend of Milky Way is growing, is spreading around the world. But honestly, I feel like that's so intimidating for any jungler now to try and live up to it. If your team is trying to mirror that and then <laughs> you don't live up to it, they're like, everyone's just flaming you. You're not Milky Way, bro. You're not him. <laughs> Guys, we are getting everything. The Annie in the mid lane, the core JJ Tarek special. This has truly evolved to be such an exciting series, an unexpected one at that between FlyQuest, the first seed from regular season against Team Liquid Honda, the fourth seed. Here we go, one last time, FlyQuest and Team Liquid Honda. All right, game five's so much fun here, putting it to the test. Just a little reminder though, of course, this is the upper part of the bracket. So uh, you do get two lives up here. Whichever team does lose this is not out of playoffs. You still have hope uh, in the lower bracket. Jensen's gotta be careful about face checking this. Yeah, he saw AP pulled yeah. around the corner and I think he got tipped off. He's like, okay, you're not walking there if there's not people beside <laughs> there's you. There's no way you're there's by yourself no right now. Core JJ on the Tarek. 37 career games, 5.0 KDA, almost a 60% win rate. But well, what's the CSD? <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> Not giving me that stat. The classic support flex. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be a fun one to watch. Again, you know, this this is a pick that I think people underestimate the laning power sometimes of the Tarek. It's not a good blind. It's horrible into these ranged matchups. But anytime you have constant access to be able to trade melee. So if the Nautilus hooks in, you're, you're meleeing him back. You're constantly resetting the cooldowns on your spells. It is really difficult to deal with. So definitely very, very strong. Obviously, Fate's Call can set you up to throw you in with that Dazzle Stun. You can bash it onto things like Lee Sin to help them set up and the Ari. So there's a lot of ways for Quartz to be successful in this one and i think it's going to be very interesting to watch because it's that obvious point of success or failure that you were talking about kobe you know you can look so good when you have the perfectly timed alt or you go all shiny while your carry's dead <laughs> on the ground beside you and gorgeous jay picks it a lot with his ad carry playing Callista, and they play so aggressively with hopping forward to place the stun Callista is one of the best ad carries uh at being able to allow those uh those the, those Tarek stuns to land without core himself uh, having to be the one. So we'll definitely keep our eyes on it. Currently though, if you look at the mini map, you're always uh -oh. tracking uh, junglers and they do have Umpty clearing from bottom to towards top. Whereas Inspired is clearing down towards that bottom side, towards the Callista Terra claim. Bwipo again took a, a really bad trade. It's kind of starting off a lane in a similar way. You know, he lost about 50, 60% of his health uh, off of the earlier level two there from impact. And yes, you want to get every bit of experience that you can, but you still have to be very careful in these spots because we've seen how that can turn into a large deficit. You know, impact in the last time they played this matchup, two solo kills. Yeah, critical note here, Team Liquid were able to spot Inspire taking the Raptor camp. Umpty goes through fog and lands the Q on the red buff. So they don't have information on where exactly he is at the moment. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, choice because we are going to have a an earlier respawn of Raptors and Krugs for Inspired uh, since he is doing his red last. And so you have a little bit of time discrepancy there. That will come into effect in the second clear, obviously, to see how quick you can rush to a level six. But Umpty is, is getting out here, skipping Krugs, still level three, wants to take advantage. Ward hop, E flash, there it is. Gets the slow down, but APA would have to connect with the charm. And that feels like a wasted gank from Umpty. I mean, Jensen is just so good at evaluating damage. And we can see Inspired now in the area, might be able to find Umpty, who's down a level now and is gonna be pushed off this Good little sidestep there from Umpty. Uh, unfortunately, since Inspired's top laner is getting pushed into tower. Uh oh. Oh no. I mean, Umpty might be able to He's get over the no wall flash. ward hall. I thought Inspired was going to try to chase him to the bitter ends of the earth, but. Yeah, the, the Rumble, now. Rumble's got your back. Pushing top lane, nice to be able to kite up to. So Umpty runs up to his winning pushing lane. 
Does mean though, still, Inspired will be ahead uh, on jungle camps. He will be able to push out mid lane and then get double scuttle crab here. Uh, that is the price that you pay for going for a level three gank. Umpty obviously really wanted to take advantage of uh, pushing Annie here and try and get, get a first blood. He flashed for it, yeah. but Jensen procked the stun and then walks it out. So very nice, calm play from the veteran. I mean, he, he's so good at evaluating damage in these situations uh, where he almost never just ha like panic flashes or anything like that. He's so good in those tense moments. Uh, and it's tough because it's like, there's you're going ward hop, flash E, but APA can't really follow up on that. He's too far away, right? It was so difficult for him to be in that spot. And without APA being able to find Charm Flash to follow, you were never really gonna get that kill. Jensen evaluates correctly, holds onto the Flash, Umti gets pushed out, means double scuttle four inspired, and that's the knock-on effect, putting this Lee Sim behind. And then you're thinking about, oh, well, if APA had walked up earlier on the big wave in front of oh. him, all but inspired is here an impact it might just be cooked here ignite is still available but the cc train guarantees first blood for inspired yeah nice gank there they get it uh on impact will not be a solo kill this game but what i was going to say yeah if if your re moves up too early into a big stacking wave your opponent is going to get tipped off uh and know that there is a jungle gank coming so we'll see though this is such a big bounce back for Inspired. Everybody was talking about the you know picture that even FlyQuest posted themselves. Yeah. Uh, Inspired was uh, looking a little sweaty there. It was look, looking like there was a lot of pressure on them. FlyQuest, it always does feel bad coming into a game five too when your opponents are the ones who just kind of had the bounce mm -hmm. back and they won game four. So for Inspired to get that first blood and the early start feels pretty good for FlyQuest, but their bottom lane might pay the price. Yeah, looks like MTQ'd over to the Krugs. It's walking over to Bustio first. Who's going to take the tower up first? It should be uh, Umti. They get the Ignite down. Does Core JJ dive to the minions? No, clean dive from Team Liquid. They're yeah, going to be able to pull off in mid lane APA. Gotcha. Going to be just traded into. It's not going to be really a look for a kill. Uh, this is kind of the any classic. Have you seen much any in pro play? Tippers is off cooldown. Tippers is getting used. You just constantly use it to try to chunk out your opponent, get push in lane. Um, we didn't really get to talk much about the follow-up in top lane, but the fact that Impact dies sucks so much more because he's not playing TP, right? So he loses the wave, and it means when the wave bounces, it's pushing away from you, which puts you in a spot to get re-ganked, uh, and it's very, very tough. Whippo also was being way more respectful in this matchup. This time, he took an early base and just TP'd back with a null. Like, that was his first buy. Then it's into a Ruby Crystal. He's going to play it much more safe. He's going to make the adjustments, knowing that last time, when he played aggressive, he got punished hard. Yeah. The classic uh, bounce back for a top laner. Play more safe and call jungle. There you go. <laughs> Love it. Uh, that that one is jungle diff, Kobe. I say that one two combo for top laners is undefeated. <laughs> Play safer, call jungle. GG. What if my jungle doesn't come? <laughs> uh, you got some other problems. Yeah. Yeah, jungle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I said, shot it's the jungle the problem. <laughs> Interesting to note here. So we got first tier two boots purchases from both mid laners. APA going with the Mercury treads because he's respecting the CC, but Jensen is going with Ionium boots. He is more focused on going for those flash plays, the stuns to set up the yeah. rest of his team. Yeah, the flash plays, being able to have that tippers up constantly, really nice as well. As Impact still doing well, looking for the push. But we also have to remember, even with the incredible start from Impact, FlyQuest played the map really, really well in that one, utilizing the double team advantage, pulling them around the map, and they made Impact fall behind because he always had a group with his team, whereas Whippo was in a side lane, Jensen's in a side lane, and he ended up falling behind in that one so much in experience as a result. Dallas done on Nabusio. Is he... Is he in threatened range? He doesn't have Flash. The Rens are stacking up. Yeah, that's a 2v2 clean solo kill from Yawn and Boost. Or Yon and Core JJ, my mistake there, as Masu forced to cleanse the stun, and APA is coming down for the roam. Has Spirit Rush available, but Inspired's gonna match. Masu should be fine, but this is a huge wave that is stacking up, and Masu is gonna be under pressure. TL, TL bot lane diff does not miss, okay? This, yeah. this series, uh, wow. Really, really impressive stuff from them. Okay, Impact is gonna go overheated onto Whippo. Has the Ignite available. Whippo still has Flash, is waiting until the right moment. Impact is burning him down into the minion wave, so he cannot be followed up by a Harpoon. Forces the Flash, well done there from Impact. Waited till he spent all his skills on the wave, then drops the Equalizer, looks for that pressure. Impact not gonna greet it out, he's just gonna base here though, as TL will get the Dragon off of that bot lane pressure, looking really strong again. And also, I am a big fan of Tier on Terek. This is such a mana-hungry champion. It is a bit of a greedy early buy, but if you're not being pressured heavily in lane and you get that early tier, it's so much value later on. It's so much more healing you can get out. So many more rotations of spells. Even for things like objective takes like Baron, it makes it 
it super safe because you won't go oom um and you can just heal auto auto heal auto auto and yeah. you keep your team full health and especially with a Callista, that's so powerful Lucia does have to be careful still doesn't have flash available ignite is back up but with how the lane has gone yawn and core jj are totally in charge of dictating how the rest of the laning phase goes man this makes it so difficult for jungle because you're getting called everywhere mm -hmm. uh, top top lane is constantly volatile pushing in you know whippo doesn't have flash anymore so flash disadvantage up there also but then bottom lane is constantly fighting here uh now two deaths for busio he goes for hex flash plays uh they're getting pushed in it looks like they've chosen top side the battleground umt is trying to commit first but they need to make it a fast play otherwise inspired is here for the counter the spectrum wall lands the root onto umty just a little bit of damage back onto the jungle but no one going to go down yeah once the q misses from umty they know they're not gonna have enough damage to kill him off there's no way so they're just gonna back it off nice little smite on the minion with the spectral maw to land the stun there from inspired uh, who has had a bit of a quieter game after getting the first blood but he has been power farming and he is going for a very aggressive build here uh, likely going towards kraken i would assume yeah, um, and it's going to be, you know, really high DPS build. The Kraken uh, buffs from a couple patches ago for AD carries was so nice for Viego, but here's a repeat on top side. Core JJ's top again. 2v1 didn't work, but 3v1 and no Inspire to bail him out this time around. Whippo without the flash cannot get out alive. Umpty takes the kill. We heard Dokla talking about it. You always think Core JJ's up there. Whippo was talking about it. You always think Core JJ's ganking top side. He does it with Umpty and that should be Void Grubs. Inspired Pluses. is here, but look, the whole team is rotating up. And with Masu staying bottom, I think Inspired has to just leave. Yeah, and I mean, if they commit it, Equalizer is available, right? Impact could just cancel the base. I think you would just get cooked. So yeah. they get the kill, they get a plate, they get Grubs. Oh, mid lane's in trouble. And it looks like that is Yon as the target had flash, but the death charge and the point and click CC that we were talking about during the champ select comes through fruition and Yon is taken down. Yeah, now with that kill, they're going to be able to at least grab one grub for themselves. MT should be able to get out, but grabbing that one grub feels really nice. Even if you just get the one off the two, uh, off of each of the two, you're going to be able to, to deny the Void Might spawns, which is really that most important part. Plus, you get the bonus XP for that first grub that you do take, uh, which is going to feel nice as well. Does mean four Void Grubs for FlyQuest, so neither team is going to get yep. the extra little grubby there whenever they're sieging on the towers, but Impact still going to push Whippo off. Still no flash available for this Crocodile. He's got to be careful. Umpty has kick available. Dashes through. Double teleports are coming in. Both APA and Jensen are going to show up to the fight. They're trying to all in on to Whippo. Both the jungler and the top laner go down here, and now it's a 2v2 situation. Spirit Rush available for APA, but they're just going to take the trade and leave. Yeah, they call it off because look at these wards in the jungle actually save them from an extended fight. They saw Nautilus coming uh, on their deep ward jungle uh, or jungle wards there, so Busio did have the safety net. He goes for the recall afterwards is just going to be the trade. Exactly, and then you look at the cost on bottom side. Masu just has to leave again. They're losing more plates. They're losing more waves. Uh, Masu going to be the, the sacrificial lamb for that roam from Busio up towards top side. So uh, TL get what they can get, and they're going to be able to. <laughs> I, back I just it off. love the confidence from Yon. This guy, this guy has been on Team Liquid Academy and Team Liquid for so long. They have invested really, really heavily into this player, and for a while, right when he joined uh, the main team onto the LCS squad for TL, was receiving a lot of criticism. Criticism, uh, but is so confident now. Umpty messing around with a little bit of uh, jungle confidence as well, going for some possible steals, but in inspired secures. Off fates call. Jensen over the wall tries to isolate Yon, but the Cosmic Radiant comes down and they are invulnerable for now. But they have to kite away because the second fight from FlyQuest could be disastrous. Yon getting pincered out by Inspired. Flats away. Flash away from Core JJ as well. Umti using his own flash. That could have been disastrous for Team Liquid and FlyQuest bullied them out of the Yeah, jungle. it's that ward in that, that brush over by the red buff that allowed Jensen over the wall to go for the Tibbers. That was really well played by Jensen. Notice how he also dropped a pink there to make sure, you know, they they saw him over the wall after the initial tippers play came out, but uh, really well positioned from Jensen, catches him by surprise, pushes him back, forces out those flashes. And these are the kind of plays and these are the kind of angles that you're looking for with this Annie. Has the Malignants online now, so the alt CDR gonna be very low. You can get to ridiculous states to where it's like Tibbers is practically permanently out there. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm expecting him to go in towards like Leandries. That's the build I most see commonly, uh, is just Malignants into Leandries. People often go Rylize and stuff, and it becomes so annoying to actually deal with this bear, just walking around AOE slow, AOE burn. 
And a big part of the goal of the team comp for FlyQuest is all the burst damage that they have, getting a spirit for Inspire to possess for this Viego reset. Uh, they were all pretty low, but couldn't quite get there. Oh, Core JJ might be in trouble. Dodges Whoa. the dredge line. They're hiding this one out. Core JJ still might be in trouble. Inspire commits the Heartbreaker, and it's enough damage from Famasu to finish him off. No reset for Inspire as he has to kite away. Yawn cleansing Ooh. the stun from Jensen. Oh, the equalizer. Oh! The green arrow from Masu picks up Yon in the back half. Impact is trying to equalize the situation here, but he still goes down. APA forced to run. FlyQuest continuing to truck on forward. Man, Yon just got blasted. Jensen throws a little bit of damage on him. He instant cleanses it, backs off, and then the piercing arrow from Masu finishes off the kill. Surprising amount of the burst there onto Yon. Yeah, that was a really nice shot, but because Impact came down and Impact tried to answer another one, Whipple gets more alone time on the tower. He can't quite get it, uh, so it just ends up being a little bit of chip damage and has to respect the realm from APA. There's no Spirit Rush, so he can't necessarily threaten to gap close on to Whippo, but man, for Masu to really, as we see, Impact. He's got a lot so, of all-time records. We, yep, we've yes. shown a lot of banners here. I'm not. I can't even keep track of all of he's them. He's been here for a while. Yeah. yeah. And he's been killing it for a while. Seventh player to hit 1,500 kills. Well done, Impact. As there's a dive in the works here against Whippo. He's just going to back off and give respect to the members of Team Liquid. But what I wanted to say is that Masu was being bullied off the tower. They're putting a lot of pressure into the bottom side of the map, but he never died. He never went down in lane, and he's able mm -hmm. to answer up for it by picking up two clutch kills in that fight. Yeah, definitely credit to him. You know, it did feel like Kor and Yon absolutely had the pressure in that bottom lane. You know, they got the kill on Debusio. They pushed him off a lot of times, but he's right in it, right? He's going to have that slight gold lead very likely, depending on how much gold was actually taken from plates. He's really close, but Masu does have a slight edge. Uh, and Masu in a position to try to have a big performance here, to try to be that person who steps up in game five, is the difference maker. Inspired also in that great spot. We have to remember back to his last Viego game where he started with two early kills, wasn't able to accomplish much. This time it's even better start, more jungle camps, three kills, including first blood. And like I said, this team comp is basically made to burst someone down. They've got Annie, Lethality, Varus, and Nautilus, all just like, all right, we're gonna get you a, a kill, baby, and then go to go to Reset City, yeah. Inspired. We saw the pentakill that you got in uh, EU. Uh, we, got, we, we saw the MVPs, you know, let's see it in game five. I mean, on top of it as well, it's not the Sunder Sky Rush for Inspired. It is Kraken Slayer, just trying to maximize the damage output. Equalizer comes out, Whip was already popped the Dominus. Jensen with the teleport, easy CC setup Ooh. on Impact. APA cannot rectify the wrongs there. Cosmic Radiance is coming down. Yawn Force oh. comes just in time for the invulnerability, but he cannot hop, skip, jump away from this one because Inspired locks him down with the Blade of the Rune King. And now he's playing the Callista. He gets the hop, skip, and jump. Finds one on a core JJ. Resets have come through for Inspired, and he's 5 0 1. Yeah, that's three quick kills, and they can push mid lane afterwards as well. Fly Quest taking over. Looking really confident on that play. Immediate commitment to the top lane play on to impact. They find this angle. They stun enough. They look for the TP in. Jensen arrives. They burst him right down. Even though APA was pretty quick on his TP as well, there's no chance to respond. Then Masu Whoa. just catches uh, Yawn there as he's walking out. Barely the Cosmic Radiance comes down to keep him alive for a moment, but it's not quite enough. He couldn't finish off Inspired. Inspired gets the reset, means Core's gone for free. And it's FlyQuest winning in two lanes, catching people in transition, trying to get up there to help up their top lane. Now the fight in the works here. Dazzle tries to connect. Busio flashes it to make sure the stun does not land. He's gonna be thankful that he does not give up a potential kill over to Team Liquid. They're now still jockeying for position in the mid lane. Dragon is not coming up for three minutes, so there's nothing really to fight for. It does feel tense. And it feels like a flashback to that previous Rumble game. Dredge line, MT is trying to look for Masu, ends up kicking Whippo instead, takes the resonating strike. They get one kill, but MT is traded out by Inspired, and now he gets to be the least in, takes the Sonic Wave, finds APA, he's gonna be Ari, gets the charm out, but Yan through the cleanse, still goes down. An equalizer from Impact It's gonna turn around the fight and get at least one kill back over for themselves. Two to Team Liquid, but three to FlyQuest. No objectives, no problem. We play for kills, baby. And they get a bunch of them. 3.6 thousand, the gold lead. They get to push the tower afterwards. This is all well in advance 
of the Dragon or the Baron coming up. So it's they, they could completely open up the map. The last of the outer tower is now down on the side of Team Liquid. FlyQuest get to reset and now come set up their vision. Now they get to set up the play. And FlyQuest are just playing the map better, right? You know, it's Annie in the top lane. They have double TP, so they look for the engage here. They find the hook in on Decor. Umzi trying to find the angle there, but can't quite catch up to Masu to kick it back. Whippo, unfortunate flash, obviously not going to disconnect from the resonating strike as it comes through. He does go down, but it's the reset either way for Inspired. He connects on the Q, on the Lee Sin, then he connects on the Charm, on the Ari. Impact shows up, but it's not going to be enough to chase in as Jensen has rotated down. But again, they're just getting these incremental advantages in the side lanes. They're dictating where they're fighting. They're dictating when they're fighting. This is FlyQuest fully in control in a macro game where they're also out executing on the micro plays, on the team fights. And Busio, even though on this Dautilus, he died two times really early on in the game. There, he get lands hook after hook. Then he turned on APA. He hit the ultimate with Nautilus first with a loud Masu, the really easy follow-up uh, Chains of Corruption on the Varus to secure them the extra kill. Those two of have just been catching so many TL players out. And you look at the complete items now for Fly. It's two items already for Inspired. It's two items already for Jensen. He elected to go for that Rattly second. He's going to go in towards the Magic Pen next. Opportunity's done now for Masu. So he's got his two items. They are ridiculously strong. And everyone on TL side is really just trying to scrape together pieces. And you've lost the early game with this comp that can't play the map very well. It's going to be so hard to come back. You know, yeah. Flyquests are just going to keep shoving out waves, keep making you respond to them. And if you don't, guess what? You're just falling further and further behind. And I can't help but think back to the mid lane gank attempt from Umti, where he tried to go for the triple flash to guarantee the charm lock in from APA, but both were not able to sync up and make that play possible. Well, they stopped the recalls. They're going to go to try and catch these two. Everybody rotating up topside. Um team wants the kill and they need to get something, but a teleport from Whippo is gonna put a stop in their tracks. Impact is able to stasis the burst damage from Annie, but Umti is in trouble, but he's got AP and he's got Yawn. They're corralling right onto Whippo and Jensen. They have to all in everything. Cosmic Radiance is gonna give them the invulnerability to survive. This is huge for Team Liquid. Impact doesn't go down. That is massive. Impact with a perfect stasis there with the Seeker's arm guard. Immunes the flash tippers from Jensen. Survives. TL get all the kills and the Baron off this play. The wheels just came off for FlyQuest. This series is a banger down to game number five. And TL, they come back. They're going to... Wait a second. You're not going to Varus steal this, are you? I, I have to think it with how the series has been. Masu has seen the tape. He knows what Gumiyushi did in World 22 Finals. Can he pull off a miracle for FlyQuest in their most desperate hour? But he already fired the arrow. Team Liquid will take the Baron. They're going to get the Baron, and they may even get another kill here. It's Busio going a little bit far. They're going to back it off, though. And just like that, the gold lead, gone. Completely gone. They try to look for this play, but the Equalizer early from Impact stopped the recalls. Oh. And then that stasis there with the Seeker's Arm Guard immunes the Flash Tippers. That is the defining moment. If they could get that reset, if Inspired survives, maybe you can turn it around with both TPing in. But because they couldn't get it, Tarek arrives, the ulti comes down, no one dies. Total disaster for FlyQuest on the top side, and you know they have got to be ecstatic. Impact is actually the GOAT. That's why we keep showing banners of all his achievements <laughs> in the LCS. That was insane. He knew as soon as Jensen gets there, this Annie is coming to flash stun me. Yeah. So he times it perfectly, still gets the cooldowns out, and then Core JJ arrives and the mm -hmm. ultimate barely saves him. You can't write a better comeback here. For Team Liquid fans, that moment looked eerily familiar to week six when FlyQuest were leading the early game and suddenly Team Liquid all in. They send nearly everyone towards the top side of the map, same place, not quite the same time, 10 minutes later, but Team Liquid have now put themselves back in a winning position. Baron buff on their side and they are cruising through these towers. Dredge line connects, Umti might be in trouble. Whippo walks up, Umti is taken out of the fight. Yon has to kite away from this one. Impact with the Equalizer is gonna split up FlyQuest members here, but Inspired is on the ton. Looks for Yon, but he gets popped. The flash done with the cleanse from Yon. Keeps himself alive, as now he has to run because the rest of the members of FlyQuest want to run them down, but they just might have gained enough distance to get out. But the portals are coming in. Jensen has a blast cone available. He's got Tibbers and he's looking for Yon. Fate's call. Does he sacrifice Core JJ to keep himself alive? They get a decent bunch of damage down. Ignite, the charm doesn't connect, but it's the Orphan Deception that connects. One for one trading Core JJ for Jensen, and Impact is back. He doesn't have the Equalizer, but Basu is out of position. Huge shutdown goes over to Impact. Team Liquid are defying expectations. Impact for 
refuses to lose. This man is on a mission, the top lane play, and then makes it happen again off of the FlyQuest engage. Great kiting as well by Yon and Core. Barely able to kill off Inspired before he could get that reset on Dion. That made all the difference. That made FlyQuest commit to the chase, commit to trying to get more, and TL end up coming up big again, Kobe. This is playoffs, baby. This is game five pressure. And the overchase from FlyQuest, they, they, they can feel it slipping away from them. And so they overchased. The teleport came in. It was a one for one. Uh -oh. We're not done. Back to the action. Inspired might be in trouble, but Umti dashes back on out. Once he sees Busio in range, it's going to allow Inspired to get out alive. But Team Liquid are the ones with the pressure, and they're pushing FlyQuest to the brink. Man, that, that APA and Yon play where they're kiting back on the top lane, kiting back Inspired, mm -hmm. and then they get the Rend Burst taking him down, it feel like FlyQuest at that point kind of all in on it. And now they're facing another siege from TL. Good 4-1 split push. APA pushes the, the minions up mid lane. He got the one auto onto the tower. Just get the little bit of true damage there. Meanwhile, bottom side, they're clearing out one more wave. They got jungle fully warded up. So Impact is watching the path here between the two and they're gonna bring APA down. And this is APA playing Lich Bane. You know, Jensen, when we saw him, he was playing the Horizon Focus, more kind of upfront burst. This is going to be even better in that split push, weaving in the autos between your R's with that Malignance. This is kind of that new build that is so popular uh, throughout this season. So much unavoidable damage because you are forward, you pop the W, you're weaving in those autos, even if you're not hitting your Q and your E every single time. The damage is really, really high for some of these squishy champions. I am just in awe that this is the series that we have gotten today. I was very prepared for a dominant FlyQuest to come in, really roll over Team Liquid. Maybe there's one game that they could have gotten off the back end, but the fact that Team Liquid now find themselves ahead in gold at 26 minutes into the game, in game five, mind blowing. Well, I've got some good news for fans because the way this game is going with it being so action packed, it's not gonna stop. FlyQuest, their whole team is burst damage and Team Liquid, they don't have tanks on their team. They've got a Steric's Gage on their Lee Sin, but really they're relying on the shielding from Core JJ, his Iron Solari and his ultimate to try and get the timing correct. It, it, it makes for very exciting team fights because there is so much damage and not that much tankiness. Dredge line fishing from Busio. The Flash Spectral Maul. Oh, is the invulnerability gonna come through? APA has bursted out before the Cosmic Radiance comes through. Yawn tries to cleanse it, but gets locked down. Flyquists are back in the game, and they took out the two carries from Team Liquid. They find the huge play. Their Flash Spectral Maul from Inspired, and then Amasu, after that, finds the Flash Arrow. Connects on the ult, gets them another kill. They take out both the carries. They want more here. Inspired is really trying to hunt them down, impacting Core JJ. Core has flash, impact doesn't. Impact might just be gone from this one. Another kill to FlyQuest. They and are trying to run with the momentum. 30 seconds on Baron too. That kill was a really meaningful kill. That extra chase from FlyQuest. They know if they could get the kill on impact now, it's a no teleport top laner. Mm -hmm. Baron's up in 19 seconds. Dragon's up in one second. So they can collect the dragon, have plenty of time to move on over. FlyQuest, that'll be dragon number three setting themselves up for Dragon Soul points. Yeah, and just look at this. The initial play, they couldn't find it. It's actually from the bottom of your screen, so you can't really see him because of the picture in picture, but look at this. W flash, oh, everyone commits immediately in. Masu flashes forward, chains of corruption there, do connect onto Yawn. He cleanses it very quickly, but immediate hook comes out from Busio to follow up. So great decisive play there from FlyQuest. That's exactly what you need when you are playing into a Taric. You cannot hesitate. Everyone has to get in. Make sure you get that first kill before the ulti lands. Three flashes invested. Those coaches looking stressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's the first sigh of relief they've Woo. seen in a hot minute in this game. But it does not overcome the gold advantage. It's now neck and neck between both teams. All right. Will they punish those three flashes? Inspired, mm -hmm. Jensen, Masu here. Now they have no defense. And it's up to Team Liquid. They saved Core JJ, Yawn, APA, Umpty, all have flashes ready. Can they too make a huge yeah. flash play in game number five of Umpty, the playoffs? Umpty, he's looping around. Oh, he could go he's for Masu here. He wants to go for Masu. He gets stunned up, but he just goes for Inspired instead. But the Heartbreaker gets him out of danger. The invulnerability from Cosmocratius is used early to guarantee the kill on Jensen. FlyQuest are now down to four members. Team Liquid, will they turn to the Baron or will they look for more? 
You've got a flash, you've got a team fight, baby. They make it good. TL now turning towards Baron. Jensen's the only one down. His teleport won't be ready when he gets back up. 33 seconds on Jensen. That's 33 seconds that Team Liquid have to try and pull this Baron and force FlyQuest into their hands. No Cosmic Radiance available. Inspire trying to flank on the left side. APA playing to that choke point. Whippo already popping the Dominus and Team Liquid have to back off. It looks like for now, Whippo gets in range of impact. The Flash Dazzle Stun, the Charm connects on the Monsu, but no one can get in range quite yet. The arrow is not gonna be enough. Busio forced out of this fight and Team Liquid should be guaranteeing themselves this Baron. They've got it, they got the bear, and they handle the situation very tense, but they handle it well, they don't overcommit. The goal was always the Baron, just enough fighting to push FlyQuest away to make sure Inspired can't get in there. They have now secured that Baron, and now it's gonna be up to them to see how much gold can they get off the map. There's only one more outer tower remaining. They wanna get a lot done with this because the next objective after that is a potential soul for FlyQuest. And guess what? We are gonna be on the other side of the flash turns of this game, basically. We've had each team separating their flash cooldowns. So when the dragon comes up, uh, we're gonna have all three of those flashes for FlyQuest back in order, and TL just use APAs, Core JJs, and Umpties, so it'll be the complete opposite situation with another huge objective uh, up on the map. So what's really the question is how much can TL get with that Baron that they just yeah. invested in? And you can see they're trying to move into the enemy jungle, pushing that up. They have Impact pushing in bot. They had APA push one mid mid. He's going to go back there and push it out again as he has TP and can look to rejoin to the team. FlyQuest are trying to establish this defensive vision, see if they can find someone split from the squad. But it's four bot, one mid, and TL just need to play this out slowly. Wait for APA to get up towards that tower, be pressuring through two lanes with that Baron buff. Flash is still not back up for Masu, but it is back up for Jensen. The Equalizer forces FlyQuest off. That should buy enough time for Yawn to take out the second tier turret in the bottom lane. Team Liquid holding on to this Baron buff and maximizing what they have. They just have to be sure now that you don't fight until the Equalizer is back up, because they use that to get the tower. You don't want a committed fight now. Yeah, you don't even want to get close for, for one of these picks. Yeah. But I would say FlyQuest are in comms right now saying, nobody use any big cooldowns until the Dragon. We have plenty of time. Minute 20 seconds, uh, nice little reset here from Team Liquid well ahead of time. And if you look at the minimap, one, two, three, four, five, six, six wards used leading up to that <laughs> dragon fight. Plus they have the scuttle crab vision. So they, uh, they definitely have this place lit up. And, and this is now a death cap done for impact. He's about to get 16 here pretty soon. You can see there just hit 16 and he has the impact. That equalizer is gonna be terrifying. Big cooldowns stasis on both APA and impact through their zonias. No flash available from APA. Flash and cleanse available from Yawn. Flash on Jensen and flash just came back up for Masu. And you can cheat some of these plays too. If you have a, a vision play, it can sometimes be more impactful than the flash play. So that's the one thing when FlyQuest are trying to retake this territory. Uh, and the important part about Team Liquid leaving so many wards behind leading up towards the dragon that they just get to continue pushing with their Baron. They still have jungle control, so they have that fog of war advantage. And you see Bwipo right now on the minimap recalling from top lane. He doesn't even want to waste the time of a channel of the teleport. He buys up his crit reduction here. Yeah, and there's, there's not really any good TP wards, which is making it hard. When you look over towards that dragon, there's not really any good angle for Bwipo, so they're going to have to try to move through the team you know, as a team, move through the jungle, push out mid, try to be able to regain some control so they can get access to that dragon, unless they're just willing to give it up straight up because they don't have good positioning on it. And with the base coming through, they are not going to challenge for their soul. They're just going to sacrifice that. Also, the only crit on the enemy team is the Sundered Sky auto from Lee Sin. So it must have been a case where he had just enough gold for it. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, Callista is oh, on they're going to look for Whippo. Looking for Whippo. Spirit Rush available, another charge. The charm does not connect, but the kick does from Umpty. And Whippo's in a world of trouble, but he gets out and he's gonna stay alive. Well handled there by Whippo. The Sterics making all the difference. He's a very tanky build here. The random is the Sterics. It buys him the time with the ulti to get out of there. He does have to spend the flash, but that's a flash kick from Umpty traded for that. Jensen, meanwhile, almost took down that top lane tier three tower, looking to unlock that inhibitor as FlyQuest continue to play the map there. You know, TL have stalled out any potential soul, but FlyQuest are always gonna have that as a potential win condition. If TL ever make a mistake when that dragon is coming up, it could be so costly. 
I love it. I want this amount of tension in all of our playoff series. God. And this is upper bracket as well. Yeah. Heading towards uh, the next move here. Team Liquid push out mid lane, rotate on up. They want to transfer their vision over the top side of the map in preparation for the transfer of objectives. So, Dragon already taken, Baron coming up in minute 20 seconds. A little bit of interesting LCS history could potentially be made. If TL were to win, this would be the first time in LCS history that both the number one and number two seeds lost in playoffs in the first round. Never happened before. But TL and Cloud9 looking to combine to make a little bit of history. Something people have been talking about this entire split in the LCS is how competitive mm -hmm. it has been with all of the teams yeah. being uh, very threatening through the regular season. Those were best of ones, but yeah. it's even showing up in the best of fives in the upper Equalizer bracket. Equalizer onto Jensen. Stand strong. Using the stasis from APA. Jensen is gone. Teleport comes in from Quipo. Remember, he doesn't have flash from before. Cosmic Radius is going to come in. They try to save impact on Lumpty, but they get bursted down. Boosie with the flash. Tries to look for APA. He flashes backward. Yon look is on. free hitting. Look at Freon. He's got cleanse and he's got flash still available, but he's cutting this one out. The flash from his rider trying to connect the stun, but the charge from APA keeps him alive. Yon flashes backward, but the resets are pouring in. The arrow from Bonsu. Is this it? This could be it. We'll see if they have the time. Long respawn timers. There's a lot of turrets to knock down. 30 seconds here for Impact. 25 there for MT. I think they might be able to respawn in time, but it's going to be close. So FlyQuest going to back off. They're going to go towards Baron instead. They know they can't go for both. Oh, Dios mio. Oh, man. Yeah, they've got to go for it. Three seconds here on Baron. They will be able to pick up the Baron, though. Yeah. What a huge, huge fight for them. And it started out with a pick onto Jensen. It started out with Impact melting Jensen down. APA goes in, hits the charm, so that Jensen burns down in the CC. They assassinated the Annie, but the turn from FlyQuest was better. Exactly, it's about to turn, and I'm gonna draw your eyes to how close Cordier J was to actually getting his ulti in onto Impact. The initial stasis there from APA was great. They hit the charm. They're all going for this burst. Look at that, flashes in, can't actually get the Cosmic Radiance to land on him, or this could have been such a different fight. Yawn though, Lethal Tempo fully stacked, Rage Blade fully stacked. It looked like it's fast forwarded. It's not fast forwarded, that's just how quick he jumps. He nearly made the highlight play happen here, but he didn't quite have the damage. Hysterics popped, he couldn't take down Boy And he landed every arrow there uh, mm -hmm. as well, onto the hopping Kalista, trying to kite for the Kalista's life. Now they've got the Baron, they can turn the tides once again. In that last fight, the main rookie from FlyQuest standing up to the reigning rookie of the year from Team Liquid's Yawn. So crucial in that oh. fight. And now big thing, Yawn, no flash, no cleanse available. Jensen has his flash. I imagine if Jensen sees Yawn, it is an instant go button for the game win. Yeah, it definitely could be. You know, it's a minute here until potential soul as well. So you definitely have to check in on those cooldowns. Stasis available again for Impact and APA. And GA critically has been purchased for Yawn. So they're going to have to kill him twice if they're going to do it. Jensen trying to get in towards his death cap, has the pieces, so would love to have that completed and should be able to do so prior to any big soul fight. Now uh, we can see APA still has a lot of room to go before he can complete his death cap of his own. And it's getting tricky here for TL. You know, both teams really on that knife's edge. Oh, it also just got more difficult. Jensen completed the death cap here on the Annie. You thought the Tibbers was painful before? Definitely going to leave a mark as oh, they boy. try and siege the base. Here they come. Baron, plenty of time left on this. They play it really safe, though. Inspire just applying the Baron buff to the cannon minion, slowly chipping away at the tower. Dragon Soul coming up. They don't want to give themselves away. They don't want to let TL get a pick or any sort of way back into the game. So cautiously retreat. Oh, Jan's got to be careful. He's trying to walk back as the last member, knowing that he is the prime target for every single member of FlyQuest. But they can't go too slow because they don't actually have vision, so they don't know if FlyQuest is just bursting this down. At the same time, TL is threatening to push down mid, and these arrows from Masu are really softening them up. Look at the health on APA and Umpty already. Yeah. APA is going to go back to base. I wonder if he has a buy. He does have TP, so if he has something like a death cap or whatever they complete, that'd be huge. But Core, Core? as well. Core's Core? caught it out. He doesn't have flash either. He would just rely on the Fates call from Yawn. Oh, the arrows are coming in from Masu and putting so much poke down and pressure on the Team Liquid. Yawn almost caught. Core wants to heal off this Gromp. He needs something to hit here. 
But I... the dragon's gone. It's too slow, right? They get the poke. They couldn't find a way in. Oh Masu is so annoying for them as they're trying to walk in. He's hitting arrow after arrow after arrow. They had no vision prior to the play. Thanks to the earlier Baron that FlyQuest got where they dominate the map. And now FlyQuest do have that Hextech soul. 9-1-9 and nine for Masu in his first ever playoff series. Game five, he's stepping up big. Fudge spoke earlier today about the poise, the confidence, the, how, how well a lot of these rookies are playing. Yes. And I think this is another example here where Masu is just not crumbling to the pressure. He started the series off with an 11-kill Kalista game, and he's looking to try to put the finishing touches on this one with another incredible game on the Varus. And we think about, at the beginning of this game, how much pressure Masu and Busio were receiving from Team Liquid. Masu made sure to never die in lane, picked up a couple of those crucial early game kills for FlyQuest, and he has been holding his own in his first ever playoff series. This guy is literally his fourth or fifth split in competitive. I don't remember exactly, but man, the fact that Masu has really sprung out of nowhere in solo queue to the FlyQuest system and immediately brought in as the most valuable prospect of summer 2023, and he is stepping up to the plate big time. Well, he has everything at his fingertips right now. He's full build mm -hmm. with the Hex Soul, the best soul for a poking Varus Ooh. here. Not only are those going to leave a big mark on your health bar, but also getting the slow here, really annoying for the Siege. And Team Liquid, they know, now is approaching the time of desperation. We've got to look for one of these big, big flash plays. Umpty here is trying to carve a path for himself to try and get behind them, look for an insect. Yeah, you can see it's also a stasis item purchased up here. The Seeker's Arm Guard purchased by Bwipo. So working towards that Zonia's on the Renekton knows it's going to be high lethality. It's all about the burst at this point in the game. Wants to have that for this potential final fight. Is Fly's going to look. Core JJ gets caught, but it's the face call. Immediately, Equalizer tries to dissuade the fight. The Equalizer and the Cosmic Radiance comes down by some time. Bwipo with the stasis. Umpty tries to look for the kick onto Inspire, but Impact falls. Core JJ falls. Yon is still trying to kite this one out. APA was not there for the fight. It didn't have teleport and FlyQuest immediately pulled the trigger. Yeah, they go, no hesitation. In goes Busio. Jensen finds the angle for the Flash Tibbers. It's up to Yon and Umpty to try to make something happen here with APA. They have a couple minions they're trying to protect. They cut the wave here from Umpty. Ah! APA is going to go in, but he's just going to die. He just pops the stasis, just trying to spear rush through. I don't know what that was. Yon is also trying to do something, but he's just a marksman against all five members. Inspired goes in for the killing blow. Umpty has to recall, and FlyQuest could just look to end it right here as they don't have any more threats to deal with. Umpty, the last one to defend, but it won't be enough. FlyQuest overcome mental warfare and adversity, but the resilience pays off true as they guarantee an appearance at finals weekend. What a banger of a series. Oh my God, how much more action back, back and forth. Could it get, there was trash talk, there was spicy picks. They had it all. It truly did a full entertainment value delivered today. And now they can enjoy their bows. FlyQuest walking back out. Nice to see all the respect. By the way, the all chat did evolve into everyone just typing GG's at the end. Everybody calms down. Once, once we got a few more people muting all, then we got a, a lot more calm in the all chat. Nicely done there, coming out on top in the end. Man, really, really. We had Pike support. We had all kinds of fun. Did we have Pike support? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but FlyQuest is going to be able to walk away with the win, and they are going to be feeling really good about that. This one definitely got very tense. I think a lot more tense than they were expecting it to be, especially when they were up 2-1. You know, they're looking like they had the momentum. They were looking like they were dominating. They were going to close it out. The Pike incident happens. Then we go into game five. This one, very close back and forth game. Both teams with their moments, with their opportunities. But at the end of the day, it's FlyQuest that finds that final moment, that finds the way to end the series. As APA wasn't with the team, they tracked his TP, he didn't have it, and when he arrives, he tried to spear rush in. I think he was just trying to kill the minions, Yeah. but it was never gonna work from that situation. They knew they couldn't defend 3v5, and ends up going all bad. And I have to say, you know, even with some of the early deaths for Busio, uh, this is the hook. They're like, oh, we see APA on minions. We know the timer for his teleport. Busio goes for it. He barely gets the lollipop there on the core JJ. It starts the fight. They get the ultimate down, then Whippo's the one that really forces it. Because uh, he goes in, he knows he has 
the Seeker's arm guard. So he forces the delay. And once they get that full engage, they know we have the soul, the Hex soul here. They're not gonna get away from us. And one of their players is on bottom lane. So nice turn there. Good call from FlyQuest. You can yeah. see them immediately go for mid lane too. They're like, protect that cannon minion. We've got, a, we've got a lot of minions. We're going straight for the end. And as much as Team Liquid tried to cut the minion wave, Umpty went down there. Oh, too little, too late. Yeah, too little, too late. But that concludes the series. We will be joining Raz and Jensen on stage for the interview. Congratulations, Jensen, on a 3-2 finish. Can we hear it from Jensen? First question, how stressful was that? Uh, I don't even know how to explain. Uh, I mean, it's, dude, that was like a completely banger of a series. Like, I thought when we got into game five, I was like, okay, this game's like completely free win. Like, we stumped early game. And then like all of a sudden it's like, oh shit, we just gave them Baron. We just <laughs> ran it down and it felt like it was lost, but we, had, we pulled out some clutch plays and made it back. I feel like that was, a, the, that was the vibe for the whole series. Like, was that an expectation coming into the series that Team Liquid would be like a tough opponent to face? Because other teams, I'm sure, that had scrim Team Liquid said that they were uh, strong enough to take it. What was your expectation coming in? I mean, honestly, I didn't really know what to expect. I think Teal is a team that has a lot of really good players, but they kind of like struggle to click so much in the regular season. So I, I definitely felt like if they play well and, you know, they figure out how to play together as a team, that they would be a strong opponent. And I mean, I guess they did show up today. They gave us quite the run for it. Let's talk about the Annie pick. We got the, it was basically, we've just seen a little bit of it. FPX care, I guess. Like, now we've got to show some Annie. Like, talk about the pick that you ended up blocking in, because now that you had, you couldn't play Orianna and Azir anymore. Yeah. You had to expand a bit going into the playoffs, and it seemed like you nailed it. Yeah, I mean, the Annie game didn't, like, go exactly as I was hoping for. Like, we had a strong early game, and then I kind of ran it down a bit. So then Annie was looking a bit weak, but I think Annie is really strong because they had a lot of squishy champs, so kind of anyone I ulted would get one shot, but except they picked Tarek, so that made it a bit more annoying, but I think Annie was really good uh, in this situation. How about your performance during the series? Because you ended up showcasing, I think my favorite uh, pick that you had was the Talia pick, um, because for a bit, like you guys had a lead throughout the series, you constantly found roams on the top side of the map, when bot lane was struggling, or at times when top lane was struggling, it seemed like you were the one that was holding it down. Just talk about your performance during the series as a whole. Um, I mean, I think I had a lot of good moments and I was like consistently like doing better than APA. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't playing super well either, so that made it a bit easier for me. But I think overall, like I played pretty solid. I had a few big mistakes and I feel like I kind of threw the Huey game. So I wasn't like too happy with my performance, but overall, I mean, I think I did, did decent, yeah. Let's talk about APA only because at the first game, like first two games, there was a lot of trash talking in the doll chat. But that started quieting down a little bit. Was it taking focus away? No, I mean, I thought it's funny, but it, it is taking focus away a bit because I, it's really hard to focus when like a bad player is talking shit. Like, if it was a good player, I wouldn't mind so much, but it is a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. I mean, looking ahead, I want to look ahead a bit because that's hilarious. Um, looking ahead, you guys are now going further into the winner's bracket. Uh, just talking about the team as a whole, your immediate gut, because of course you guys are going to be looking through the VODs, a lot to look through. Um, what's something that you guys need to feel like you need to be better at to kind of have a stronger performance? Because it looks like Cloud9 is looking strong too. Yeah, uh, oh man, like I thought we had a pretty good idea like how to play the games, but I think we ended up throwing a lot these games, getting caught out a lot. I think me specifically as well, like I think I ran it down a bit too much. So I don't know, I think we just need to clean up our individual play a bit more. I think we have a good idea how to play it together as a team, but I think we just all like had some pretty bad moments in the game. But I think if we can clean that up for C9, like we should be good. All right, and before we send it to the lounge, can I get a confirmation who was player of the series for this one? Let's make sure. And it was Jensen, congratulations for player of the series. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot, Jensen. Thank you. And we send it to the lounge. Thanks, Raz and Jensen. We got the FlyQuest bot lane. Congratulations on the win, guys. Thank you. Thank you. FlyQuest advances to the next round, you know, like everybody expected. Yeah, yeah. clean 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the three wins is really, really all that matters. But to talk me through, uh, Amasu, that last game, you got incredibly fed on Varus. Like, how were the nerves for you in your first LCS playoff series? Um, I'd say in the first few games, it was 
pretty hard for me to control my nerves. Okay. I was still like, I couldn't focus too much on my lane or what was happening in the game just because I was like constantly thinking about other things or just worrying. Mm. Um, but as in game five, especially, I didn't feel as nervous. And yeah, I slowly like scaled up in terms of how to control my nerves. And it felt a lot better, especially when I got, when I got fed. Then I was like um, more comfortable, so. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Lucio, how do you feel in this game five? We're seeing some of the highlights here where you were in control, they killed you, they got Baron, but then basically a couple comeback moments here. Uh, or not, like it was back yeah. and forth again. Yeah. It's just all a blur. Uh, like Nuketuck <laughs> says, whoever wins the last team fight will lose the next one. Um, and that's just kind of <laughs> how it is in the series. You know, like every single game, even if we're like hard losing, we somehow come back mm -hmm. and then lose a team fight and then win a team fight. It's just uh, very messy. I am going to ask, just because I interviewed Nuke Duck and we could not see the level one in that game, but it was game four when you locked in Pike. Oh, level one was a disaster. And, and, and I asked him, I was like, so apparently Busio just died. And he's like, yeah, I didn't really want the Pike, but he said he saw an angle. <laughs> yeah. So talk me through, like, did you actually prep that a draft for it or just you were feeling it? Uh, I mean, can't reveal too much, you know? True. But uh, we prepped it a little, but obviously that's not something we play all the time. Uh, in that game, I mean, the level one was just a disaster because we went five bot, Rel just W'd in on me. I leveled E and then I also died. And then we can't lane with E start because not like I can E in their face. So yeah, that game was just painful, but uh, Inspired made some great plays. So we were actually able to come back, honestly. And it just came down to like a couple team fights we honestly could have won. Also, what was your reaction to the level one? Um, <laughs> I was kind of just thinking about how we can survive the lane at that point, but yeah, the level one was like not optimal at all. <laughs> you so could I, say that. I think um, maybe we just have to like e-flash them level one at that point. Just flip the game. <laughs> uh, no. no. <laughs> I mean, they also have flash and cleanse. <laughs> I, I guess uh, in terms of your confidence level now, because uh, I felt like you guys were extremely confident during the regular season. This series was probably more difficult than you expected. Moving on to the next round, uh, did you feel like you played below your level this series? H how's the experience going to be? Uh, for me, I feel like I've been playing below my level the entire year or the split. So I can't say like I'm too happy with the way I'm playing or I'm feeling like super confident or stuff like that. Mm. But I do think I'm getting closer to finding out why I'm not playing as good as I know I can. Okay. So it's like a slow process for me. Lucio? Yeah, obviously that was below what I think I can okay. play out. Because so. I've heard a lot about yeah. Team Liquid being, I mean, for like a year and a half. I've heard about Team Liquid being better in scrims than they are on stage. Is that something you would agree with as well? Mm, it's kind of whatever. I mean, okay. they, they play good in scrims. They try. Yeah. So they're a better scrim team, but uh, it's not like they're insane or anything. Right. Yeah. For Masu, just what was the most difficult thing coming up from, like, what was the biggest thing you had to learn coming up from challengers to here? And then for Busio, what advice did you have for Masu? Because obviously you did the same thing last year. Uh, the tempo of the game is a lot different, I'd say, compared to Academy. Like in Academy, I could stay like five extra waves and not get punished for anything, or I could just like, do anything I wanted without getting punished when I have to recall. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say here, the tempo's a lot faster and people actually punish it when you don't recall when you should or don't do something when you should. So that was the biggest change. Yeah, and for me, like, uh, helping Masu, I mean, we have people on the team way more qualified and uh, with more veteran experience to, like, actually help him with stuff. Um, but I can just, like, relate to what he's learning and going through, because I learned it for the first time last year. So it's just uh, easy for me to understand what, what's going on with him. Okay. How do you feel about Cloud9 next week? Win that series, and you would not only be in finals, you'd also be in MSI. MSI. Yeah, nothing, I mean, yeah, going international win. is my main goal. But, uh, Berserker is scaling up, so he's looking good again. Moss is scaling up. There we go. Uh, Light maybe. work. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's going to be an exciting series. For this series, though, player of the series, as we saw on stage, is going to be Jensen. A uh, lot, of, lot of big numbers for him this series. 21 kills, 36 assists. Uh, some clutch engages on the Annie in Game 5 as well. I believe we'll have a little bit of a highlight role. How do you guys feel Jensen was, was popping off today? Or do you disagree? Were, were you player of the series? Definitely not, but um, <laughs> I don't know. It's all a blur. I don't know what happened, to be honest. Uh, just like team fights. 
30 of them, so I don't remember anything. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit of a blur, but I just remember his uh, three-man to UW in mm -hmm. Berlin. Oh, yeah, yep. that was huge. So uh, yeah, he carried that game. Yeah, it was a very entertaining series for us to watch. Uh, I imagine it was at some points excruciating uh, to play. Pro hopefully fun now. Yeah, oh, it was fun. Now looking back. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun in the moment even. I don't know how good it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was entertained. Uh, I did want to ask though, when games get like this, right, where like it keeps extending and suddenly the the leads that you once had don't matter or your opponent's leads suddenly don't matter because you win a team fight. What, who is making a lot of the team fight calls? Like who are the loudest voices on your team? Uh, definitely inspired. He's the loudest voice, but um, when anybody has like a good idea or is strong in the game or just sees what we're supposed to do, they just mm. call it out confidently and we listen. It can be anyone. All right, so thank you guys for joining us on The Lounge. Congratulations again on your victory. We're going to pull up the bracket for the remaining games we have this weekend, which you guys don't need to be a part of. You don't need to worry about yeah. the lower bracket for now because you're able to win. So we got Energy versus 100 Thieves tomorrow, Dig versus TL on Sunday, and then next week we'll have FlyQuest versus Cloud9 on the Saturday. That is it for us from the LCS Lounge. We will be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific for Energy versus 100 Thieves. And for now, we're going to be sending it over to the LCS Challengers. See you later. Congratulations once again, guys. Thank you. Nice work. The, the one time where you guys came, it was very good. The one where you got the first ace, yeah. it was very good. 3v1, potential on the whip. I, I was too OP. They were coping, thinking they could kill me. I had Starx just finished, I had level 11. I was like, there's no way I'm not fighting to the death. To the stun, enough damage. Jensen follows three. The three man knockup is not going to matter. Oh. As the seismic shove definitely matters. Out. Whipple is trying to zone off Yon as the backside. AP is taken out of the fight. Masu can now just free hit. The rest of Team Liquid are getting a I'm not gonna throw this. Play with Yon, play with Yon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's watching. Wait, 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 Yes. <laughs> Wait, Core JJ still has Flash, but he Sorry. gets turned up. Kobe, how could you? Oh Team Liquid fans are out in force for Kobe as Jan is also going to get caught out as well. Damned if you talk about them, damned if you don't. No, no comment. <laughs> He's level 17. Wait, the Blast Gun just punts Whippo right back into APA. He's forced to use the pop up so he doesn't even go off. Jensen. And go forward, yeah, yeah. Care for the Rumble ult? I ult the Varus, he can't get out. Yeah, yeah, kill them all. Kill them all, kill them all, kill them all. Varus no flash in the We end mid, we end mid, we end mid. Yeah, we end mid, end mid. Kill everyone, kill everyone. Zinzao as well. Make sure he does yeah, nice. No, no, end no. mid, end mid. I'm still looking at the side. Watch impact, guys. I have the Varus, I think. Okay, okay, okay. Varus, 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 Varus. I can stun him. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye, bye. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Wave, 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 guys, slowly. Watch me. Yeah, slowly, slowly, guys. Watch me, slowly. Can he survive as the satchel charge punts him backwards? Whipple is looking for one more mauling smash, but he has to chew through the slows of the Yeah. yeah, we can win, we can win. Ah, it's guys, guys! Yeah. Watch it, Anito, watch it, Anito! 3-4, 3-4. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pressing here. Are we hitting Rekin? Yeah, Anito, 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 Anito,